greatest of the greatest. A podcast that you never knew you needed. With interviews from people you have never met, or maybe you have once or twice. Asking questions and knowing more than you want to know about them. You are listening to Full Buddy Cast. Your favorite Sonic? Yeah, you know I met Sean uh, at his on... restaurant or whatever bar. No, dude, at a fucking my buddy's bar in his backyard. Shut up. Yeah, pull that way. microphone closer and tell me the story. You want we on again? We on again? We got Adrian Cardenas on. He's <laughs> man of many stories. <laughs> he can he can he's got the gift of gab. God. He can he can bring you to a place in his stories that just make you just drift off come with me also this is he's already said in between me saving the last one which took about five minutes or not even that uh and starting this one this is like the past 55 minutes of us doing this is the longest he's never smoked a little weed so he's having withdrawal so we'll see how we we, we get it we get to just watch him just kind of like go bananas here for the next uh 45 minutes i'll maintain i'll maintain so sean camp met him how old were you I was about 12 years old. I went to pick up an uncle at SeaTac Airport International. Turn around. There's fucking Sean Kemp. Six foot in. ten. Yeah, with his kid and his wife or one of his baby's mamas anyway. Yeah, and that was that. And I look over and never been one to like goo, goo, gaga over someone, yeah, yeah. you know. So I just remember going and telling my uncle, that's Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp, he's like, go over there. I'm like, and do what? <laughs> he's like, go say hi. Uh, and I remember looking back, and I just didn't have it in me. And I just and I just watched him load his bags, get in his Tahoe, and get driven away. Wow. Yeah. But that's not it. So wait, you met him another time too? Yeah, a few years later. In all my freaking madness, I, I made friends with a guy that owns a limo company in SeaTac, and he, you know, being a SeaTac uh, limousine driver, he got, he was local. He know he knew all the local celebrity action because he, not local celebrity celebrities that flew into town. He sure. got to, you know, so he met some people over the years. Dude, this is gonna get crazy. You're not gonna believe me again, but this there's stuff tying in here that you'll you'll trip on. Um. <laughs> So I this guy's name was Chris, dude, and and I don't know, he might still own this company, but we used to party hard and he had a full on Louis Tiki lounge in his backyard in SeaTac, right by near the airport. And I'm there one day hanging out doing our thing, and no kidding, there was a, uh, you know, Sean Kemp hanging out in the mix and it was interesting and again, I'm not like I wasn't going to run up and try to freaking hug him or anything, so <laughs> It was like, cool, you know, I kept my cool. I'm sitting at the table, and here's the other crazy thing that happened at the same time. There's a there's a guy that looked like Vane Rames sitting at the table. Leather jacket, big dude, you know, bald. This is, um, his name is, um, oh, man, now I'm, I've been having this this whole trip, and I, What's that? Weed withdrawals and you can't remember anything? Yeah, I need weed to remember. Um, (laughs) Holy moly. This guy used to play for the Huskies. He played for the Rams and he played for the St. Louis, um, the New Orleans Saints. Um, uh, What what year is this? 2001, 2002, 2001. Running back? He was a running back. Uh, No, I'm sorry. He played in. Marshall Falk? No, 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 for the, he played for the, for the Huskies in the eighties and he played his NFL football in the, in the eighties, nineties. He only did about four seasons. Napoleon Kaufman. No, no, no. uh, 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 Oh my God. You know what? I'm friends with him on Facebook and I'm about to have, but I'm, I'm totally pissed because I'm. You're friends with some ex football player? Yeah, brother. And that ain't, (laughs) so that ain't the half of it. This man. Get it, get, get, you, I, just, you just bumped your microphone. After talking. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Bring everything back. So this guy that I'm trying to remember his name, and I'm going to get it right now. When I met him there, I started talking to him. We started shooting the shit. It turns out that I worked with his son at South Center 
auto detailing place. Now his son was from Oceanside, California, and he was a black, half black, half white kid. This guy looks like Vin Rames. He's darker than the night. You know what? I'm going to go see his son before I leave, too, as a matter of fact. But the story's going to interest you more here. <laughs> Give me a sec. So his son, his name is Joseph. And like I said... Are you friends with him right now on Facebook? Yes. Joseph? Joseph, too. Right, hold on. Let me look at this Well, guy. his name's Joe on, 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 on that. But I guess what I'm getting at is that his dad is uh his son ends up being joseph i said i know your kid trip out and I, at that point we realized to one another that i had seen him come to the detail shop to see his son and his dad and he introduced me to his dad and all that kind of stuff so interesting family joe has always been a friend of mine we've stayed in touch over the years and uh his daughter is uh a pretty big celebrity now in Los Angeles, and she's absolutely gorgeous. Like an Instagram model type chick? Like, like she's influencer. on Empire. Shut up. She's on Empire. She does music videos. She's a singer. Her name is Soraya. And the boy, you know, my boy Joe, his brother played at uh, Kent Ridge and was a kind of a star athlete, too, and all that. Joe's a baller. Joe's a basketball player. He still plays in the league. To this day, and the NBA, um, no, and just like a league around. Oh, he never league. made it any. I mean, he never did nothing that I know professional level. Joe's just a good guy, but his, you know, his yeah, his dad played ball. His uh, so anyway, at that place though, yeah, I also met Greg the Mutt Haugwin. Do you know who that is? Sports guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just condescending. Hey, could you could you could you point your mouth to a friggin' microphone? <laughs> All right. Um, so no, I don't know that guy. Greg the Haug Maugen. Greg the Mutt Haugwin. He um he is a uh, dude. These withdrawals from this weed is just killing you right you now. Know? And I need to get this because I was trying to find that man. I'm not gonna. I think he might be off Facebook. Now. Oh, he know. deleted you. That's that's awkward. Yeah, he don't like me. Um, he heard me talking right now. Um, <laughs> that was quick. Yeah. So Greg the Mutt Haugwin, he's in a he's a he's a professional boxer out of Auburn, and uh, he was in the he had he was like the best America had to offer at one point, which wasn't very good. He he wasn't <laughs> in the professional ranks. He didn't do that great. He wasn't like a spectacular boxer, but yeah. he was a professional boxer, and he was from Auburn, Washington. Um, he, he was a 130-pound lightweight division, and the interesting fact about this man is that he was in the biggest draw in boxing history when he fought Julio Cesar Chavez in Mexico City in 1986. They drew over 100,000 people to Aztec Stadium. So this little guy from Auburn got that claim, you know what I mean? And wow. So when I saw him, I have a fucking Tulio Cesar Chavez as my fucking hero. So in the boxing legend, so I had his videos of all his knockouts and all of his shit. Right. And I re I said, holy shit, Poncho! After you're done snorting that line, pass it over here. Let me snort that <laughs> line, and then look over there. That's fucking Greg, the fucking mutt Haugwin over there. Did you go? Did you fanboy at that point? You said you don't usually get all googly no, and this. And no, that. you know what? Uh, he came over to the bar and real casual. I mean, we started doing drugs, the lines together. We were doing fucking ecstasy and coke, and he. That's what I was there for. That and so that's how he became my buddy and i laced him up for years i used to run into him at the f you'll run into this man you wouldn't know who he is if you don't know who he is but he's always at the gas station on auburn way south by the old long by the longhorns that little shell yeah, yeah he's always there i always seem to run into him there back in the day and then recently somebody who knew him of him that's a friend of mine it's like yeah you'll see him at that gas station to this day i said no shit i used to always see him there so he must he's always lived around there huh he has a broken flat nose you can tell he's an old boxer if you know your shit and he's the kind of guy you bump into him and mistake him you wouldn't know he'd freaking knock you out Kill man you. yeah and he was good, you know, and I always find it ironic that he's Greg the Mutt Haugwin. I've always considered Auburn the biggest melting pot of sleazebag <laughs> ethnicities of all kinds. I mean, you name it. Eskimo, Asian, muckle tooth, fucking Mexican, black, 
it, it, Auburn is a cesspool of just every, just, just everything. I love it. So that's like Craig the Mutt from South Auburn. How yeah. fitting. So I had him sign his old flashcard of him in his pose, and he signed it for me, and it got stolen from me in a home burglary. And, and I, I had it for years on top of my TV. I loved it. So it was broke, cool. Someone broke into your house? Yeah, yeah. We, stole everything I owned. Were you ready to murder? Yeah, bro. It's a very – I don't even like thinking about it. I'll fucking rip all your posters off your wall right now. <laughs> it's a, they stole everything uh, right before I bought my home. Everything in my worldly possession, every one of my worldly possessions was stolen. Really? They did me the favor of um, emptying out my file cabinet and leaving all my important paperwork. Which, that was cool. That was cool. Of yeah, them. totally cool of them because at that point, that <laughs> was cool of them because <laughs> that would have fucked me. I had a lot of car titles and, I mean, literally, birth certificate. They, I don't know what got over them, but I'm glad they did that. Yeah. But yeah, pots, pans, spoons, everything. Everything. Stolen. Clean. My we, die cast gone car for collection. like a week or something or what? What? Yeah, you know, that's L.A. for you, homie. These guys think they can come and just be whoever they are. You can't. You know, these guys plotted on me. I, a lot of uh, It was a combination of things. I had moved back to California. I was in a foreclosed home that my uncle was. No, no, no. He had a, a rental house that he had rented out. And right when I moved into it, prior to me moving into my home, the renters previous to him... Um, you know, vendetta shit had a fallen out, dude. So they were actually, uh, had, it was an acre property, fully fenced. And we had a business out of that place. So these people knew the layout of the situation. So they waited. I did a job down in San Fernando Valley, like I always did. And that's 50, 60 miles away. So they, they did, you know, when I got back, for example, and I was mad and I had caught my neighbor out there and I'm like, how the fuck did you let, like, how the fuck, you know, same anger. Like, how does this happen, dude? Right. Like, this is insane. And they were like upset and I felt bad because I went off on them. But they told me, you know, they came in trucks. They looked like your trucks. We thought it was you guys. Uh, we have crews. They thought it was one of our crews cleaning out because you were moving out. All my shit was boxed up, ready uh, to move into my new house. So they had a real easy task. Yeah, of just making it look like you So they movers. told me like they were there for like three hours. That's how long they got away with like blending in and just because it's a remote little area. Yeah. And so they had the big white truck and that's what the, my neighbor was like. It was a big white truck, like all scared. I'm like, how how did this happen? Like, yeah, that's all she could tell. Me. She's just like looking at me for. It was a big white truck, like yours, and like you know, she wanted to. I could tell at the time, like she wanted to say because it looked like yours, but she couldn't. I was just like, and all she could say, it was a white truck. It was a white. So truck. what year was this? 2011. Oh, okay. Yeah, 2011. And you got your you got. You got your diecast car stole. Did you go buy more? You got you got more? Or did you just I kinda... can't. Do they stole stuff from me? I'm a very sentimental person, bro. So I can tell everything I fucking my lowrider car yeah, collection yeah. since I was 15 fucking years yeah. old. Every magazine known to man about uh. cars and like three different subscriptions. My diecast, my homies. I had every set of homies that you could fucking buy. I didn't buy them off the vending machine. I'd go through the internet and get every set. All yeah. at once, boom, 25, 30 bucks a set every time. And I had, which right now is pretty cool. Like, you know, I don't have, I, I'm a very, uh, I like to take care of my, I have stuff that I've had throughout my whole life. I got this little robot that was made in Japan and it's the first dual action animatronic robot thing that my mom just happened to freaking uh. get me in a, at an LA deal. And I still have it, and it works, and I've looked them up on eBay, and they're worth cheddar. But I love my little toy, you know. I don't have any reason to so sell you st it. You still, have, still it? have it? It has two double Ds, and it runs on – it has a – what do they call those things? Um, it's a uh, robot of a guy that's inside the belly that controls it. Yeah. What do they call it? It's like a cyborg. Yeah. So it's badass, you know, and it's retro, and it's like a famous Japanese toy, one of the first – toys it had two actions because it spins and the little dude inside goes up and down it was like a feat of technology at the time <laughs> whatever but it's cool japanese style freaking toy and it's all like has a shield and a gun and he shoots his gun it's, all, pew, 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 pew. it's fucking <laughs> sweet but anyway i'm into that i like i like vintage stuff antiques toys collectibles i yeah. mean i got a lot of kooky shit but it, you got rat fink stuff 
I don't have a lot of rat fink stuff, but oddly enough, my mentor is a rat fink freak. And I, I, you know what? I have some stuff gifted to me that is some really cool rat fink artwork that hangs on my wall that's hand pinstriped and painted. And did I watch this? Uh, did you watch the interview of the guy? No, big his son or the real one, Big Daddy <sighs> Roth or his, dude. I don't. I don't. He was a great dude. This a, dude, <laughs> dude looked like he was like ninety years old. Oh, okay, so he, they talked to the real one before he passed. Maybe yeah. I haven't. I don't recall. I watch a lot of footage about him. You know, but Ed, Ed, Ed Roth was a legend, bro. I can't even begin. My mentor, like I said, is a freak. So I know a lot of him. I mean, even outside the car realm, that guy's a legend. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I love it. Um. Southern California lifestyle type shit. In, in L.A. In L.A. Uh, uh, very special place. Middle name? No middle name? No middle name. Why no middle name for, for A.C.? I mean, A.C., baby. I mean, you when, you're, when you're cut out in life for things, you just got to have that sharpness to things. I and, like that. And it has to come from somewhere. So somewhere along the way, mom said... No, A- AC, we can't interrupt that syllable, <laughs> that sound. No, yeah, I don't, my mom didn't, my mom is, um, for being a little old Mexican lady, she was ahead of her time, so I find that kind of progressive for who she is, that, you know, because we're typical, everyone in the family has fucking four goddamn names minimum, you know, it's like, what, what the fuck? What yeah, I got, I, I got a question for you on this one. How many birthday parties do you go to? Oh, fuck. But I'm telling you, Veronica, always going to a birthday party. Like everything on, it's a, like every weekend. And I'm like, oh. is, and now I understand pinatas because they're cheap to make. It's like, shit, we celebrate a birthday every other weekend, every weekend. We can't afford this. Oh, Here, man. let's get some paper. T- some cheap let's, ass let's, candies. Throw them in this th- fucking toilet paper th- made th- fucking thing and, and let's just, get it done. Just paint it like a car- cartoon character. Ah, shit. Uh, you know, that's funny. Is again. that a cultural thing or no? Look, dude, you you know how cynical and how nasty. So here we go. Uh, I'm against the grain and, and I'm Mexican. But yeah, you know, what's with all the fucking kids? I mean... <laughs> We're not plowing fields. We don't got fucking the pigs to tend to. Enough of the kid having shit. You guys are a bunch of broke bastards fucking... Just having children. Are you talking to, are you talking, are you talking to me right In now? In general. All Christians and Catholics. <laughs> and, white pe- and white people. God, and Midwesterners. <laughs> that way over 220. Females. No, I'm an asshole. But look... Uh, <laughs> no, but really, folks... <laughs> No, look, uh, the, the kid thing. Are you thing, on stage right now? You're killing it. The kid thing is, uh, you know, uh, I'm not. You know, I don't want kids, and I have a funny, cynical attitude towards it. I love kids. Nothing against the little fucks, but yeah, you know, what's with having them all and making that the center point of your fucking life or relationship or marriage? Get a fucking life. You know, being a dad is not the fucking reason you should applaud yourself or pat yourself on the fucking back. No. What have you taught the little fuck? That's what I want to know. When I come over, is he going to freaking be respectful, shake my hand, say hello and walk away? Or is he going to be a little turd? So, and I, I feel like I'm, I would have a kid maybe if I didn't live in Lancaster, California too, you know? Like, I'm not sending my kid off to that fucking school district. So I, it, do, is it because, it, does it remind you of the Enoquah School District? No, not at all. I, that would be a blessing to have a school district. Like, I mean, I had a great, I credit everything down to the, my vocabulary because of Enumclaw. You know, my friends are, well, you know, they give me guff, but in all reality, it's hardly a fucking knock on me. It's like, you know, my friends are all, hey, you know, it's like that, dude. And I appreciate not sounding like that anymore. I might be like the high and mighty in me, but I don't, I like to just be, you know, it gets you further beyond your circle. That's why I can go down to the tire shop and still talk to the Crans brothers. That's yeah. why I can still go and see Mr. Bolton because I got respect, dude. You're not going to get that acting like a jack off. I'm a very, bruh. Obviously, I'm not, you know, I, I got a, a vulgar vocabulary and maybe, and I like that. I kind of get off on it. You like do. push it. You yeah. You do. You love it. But, you know, the tr- the words aren't mista- to be mistaken. The point is not to be, you know, different. It's there. I, I can... So so when it's about respect, you know, the people that can vouch for me will tell you that, you know, like you said, I have a tendency to fly off the handle, if you will. Like I like to show 
you know, like I just said, kind of, you know, push it and be fucking corny with it, how much I push it, because I think I might be good at it, too, a little bit. Right. But I understand that I don't like to be vulgar in the wrong situation. I don't appreciate vulgarity and, like, just, I'm not going to talk to Jared's mother this morning at Charlie's like I'm talking to yeah. my buddies at Mazelon. Yeah, you're not trying to be vulgar. To an extent, because I still shock Terry. We have a good time. You're not trying to be vulgar just for the sake of being vulgar. No, I feel passionate about most every subject I can talk about. <laughs> you know, And that's an issue. I'm one of those people. I get, you know, I fucking have opinion. I'm pretty, but not opinionated in the sense of like, if okay, now I'll keep my mouth shut and stay out of it. I can understand the generalness of shit like, it's what it is. What are you going to do? Fucking, and I can overlook it. But if you want to ask me and you want my opinion, I'm not going to just give you some generalization. No, I got this shit dialed right, in and right. I can pinpoint it, dude. So don't fuck with me about why I don't have a kid or why I don't have... Motherfucker, please. That's not the way I live my life, dude. Right. I just feel like... Uh, do you get guff for not having a kid? It feels like it when you start to defend yourself or explain yourself because all of a sudden you're the bad guy and people are looking at you like, holy shit, he was awesome until he's like, now it feels like he's personally attacking me. But it's like, I'm just trying to tell you my perspective. But who, who I, I don't think I've ever gone up to anybody and been like, oh, you don't want kids? Wow, what's wrong with you? Do oh, you- dude, are you serious? I mean, come on, that's the general like what's why not like it leads to other things i mean come on how many people do you know that can get away with just telling someone yeah we don't want kids oh and that's the end of it no everyone's what do you mean (laughs) you don't want and sleepless nights and worried no i mean you know and then i listen to people shout out to brent (laughs) (laughs) if uh if it, you know, I don't know. It, it, for myself, dude, I'm lucky in my life that I found the love of comedy because I have people now that I have grown to like look up to that explain my feelings really well. Like I feel like I I'm lucky enough to have understood the comedy that I listen to and found these people. So I got so lately, what I'm getting at is like. I listen to so much stand up in my shop more than music on my radio. I'm by myself just listening to stand up. That's all I listen to. I go to sleep. And the podcast here and there. To what's that? Yeah. And, yeah. The, and the podcast. Oh, there. and and you know, it's funny, Poncho, my cousin, I send him every day at four in the morning. I'm YouTubing him, sending him videos of uh so I'll be rolling around sleeping in my night, most any night, and I'll have my earbuds in. And I'll have the fucking stand-up going. I can't go to sleep without it. I'm addicted the last two, three, four years. My wife, she made me get earbuds because I used to go with the sleep with this, it, this, with it right on. And she'd just lose her shit <laughs> yeah. after a while. Like, are you shitting me? More stand-up, all this negative, cynical <laughs> shit. Like, I love it. <laughs> and you, you're just cracking your knuckles and just putting them back Dude, in. Dude, totally. Ah, yeah, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> so, the, But the fact is, I think... You know, and everyone likes to joke, oh, yeah, comedy, the truth tellers, and that's where the truth comes out. But again, quoting some of my, Doug Stanhope has a bit on like how inane Jerry Seinfeld comedy is. And he says, you know, no, it's not cute. You know, it shouldn't be celebrated. So, you know, so how bad is the food on the airlines, Jerry? (laughs) And he's like, that's not where I stop. I want to know what are we going to do about it? Yeah. Like, you know, and take that next, that's take, where I'm at. I'm, the next step. Yeah, you know, because that whole like uh, observational comedy, I like, I've got, it, it's always been funny to me, but I've learned, I've dialed in, honed in on my love of like, I've got a group of cynical motherfuckers. They're sicker than me. And I'm like, it makes me feel good that it's not just me. But right. at the same time, I love they're much more eloquent than me, dude. They can just, I love how, and so relating to this is the fact that you did stand up a few years ago yeah, yeah, right. and it blew my mind. Cause I mean, that's a fucking, that is an inner seeker dream of mine, like to be able to do that. Oh. But I could never, I don't like that kind of attention to an extent. I couldn't, you know, I have that fear of being on a stage and I'm right. not really trying to. But God, I fucking feel like I could do it. I feel like I could do it. I think very, you could. And I feel like I could do it well. I think you could. And, and I go to the Laugh Factory in LA and I go to see the shows and I'm a freak down there. Yeah. And I just, I'm always just kind of, but I've never outwardly, have, but I feel like I've studied you, it enough to. Yeah. Have you heckled before? No, I don't. 
see the need and it just it's I stupid. feel it's stupid. It yeah. is stupid. I feel like that's the drunk guy. Yeah. That's the that, that's a certain breed. Yeah. And it's not it's opposite of the man on the stage. Yeah. It's the guy who maybe gets drunk and then wants to be he maybe feels like me. That's right. But it takes him getting drunk yeah, to even liquid courage. And then he fails miserably. Yeah. Oh, and everyone hates him. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to be that guy, no. you know. No. There's a good one. Greg Giraldo, a sleeping guy at his special in New York, and he just tears him up. Hey, uh, are you, are you fucking sleeping? <laughs> I mean, no, don't get me wrong. I mean, we're only filming my special. Come, but are you, are you fucking sleeping? <laughs> like, and he calls him out, and he just rips him, and it's some Jamaican guy all smoke. He's like, you know, I don't go down to your job, and fuck, I know my job's boring. I mean, I'm standing up here, but I don't, you know, I don't. I mean, I guess if I went to watch you, I don't know, I don't know, grow weed, I'd probably fall asleep too, and you know, and all this shit. It, it, he just ripped him, dude. It was funny, man. Yeah. And the poor bastard's like literally like half a, I don't know what the fuck possessed him to fall asleep. Uh. But I love, I love that the fantasies there. And let me take it back even further. I remember the first time I ever heard stand up. Sinbad, HBO. Sin oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. always used to sneak into my uncle's room. He had this HBO and Showtime for the Skinamax flicks. <laughs> and uh, I came across this guy, dude. It ended up being Sinbad. And, dude, what kind of fucking man makes a fucking kindergartner stop in his tracks, sit his ass down, and pay attention? You know, kids aren't into stand-up. They're not into fucking like, yeah, watch this. This right. is funny. Right. No, they don't get it. I was fucking dying. I remember, couldn't even fucking breathe, dude. And I was just dying. And you know what the bit was? Sucking the fucking. This was the bit. Like it's corny. It's I'm gonna right. interlude right now. It's Sinbad, like his bit about anybody ever have a McDonald's shake? He be sucking the straw like this, and he's doing the thing like you can't get the. Sh and I'm dying. Like I was just like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. I can never suck my shake through the straw. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that first taste of observational. Like, comedy, yeah, you yeah. got to like relate to it. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it hit me, dude. And he did his whole bit, and yeah. I've gone back to see that bit throughout the years to like re. I'm like, I, I, I was been interested in like what rekindled that. I'm gonna. I'm going to go see that Sinbad special again, and I'll pop it in, pop it on, whatever. But not only that, so my uncle, we grew up with my 18-year-old uncle in the house in Southern California. He was a hardcore punker, skater, mini trucker. And he had a love for Andrew Dice Clay. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I often wonder the correlation there, because he's one of the most unpolitically correct. You listen to his shit now. Oh, Andrew Dice Clay? And it's oh, almost yeah. not funny. You right. Know, I he can't... just says he. most of it's just for the shock. Yeah. Fact. But there is but there is a method to his shit. Right. He was good. He lost it. He right. fell off the deep end. But he started out pretty good. Right. And, and actually, this is how much I watch stand-up. i seen some stuff that made me think, God damn, you were somebody before the bullshit. Like, he had some good poignant conversational leading to a thing like he had a good layout mm -hmm. he was good i mean dangerfield discovered him he wouldn't have been discovered like that if he was full crude or nothing right. but crude but he did go off the deep end i did his movie I touch the table his movie um the adventures of ford fairly and it's one of the best movies uh that never you know, he pissed off the industry. Not a lot of people know about that movie. But if you watch it, it's a badass, funny movie that should have been as any cult classic as anything. But when he pissed off Hollywood execs, they didn't promote his movie. They didn't market it. And then they put him out against like some really top build movies where they knew he would fail because he, he got blacklisted. He fucking pissed off the wrong people in his career. Wow. So anyways, I love fucking. So my uncle had the tape. The Day the Laughter Died, his famous two-tape double CD, double the tape, my, in my uncle's case. Right. And he made – I used to ride with him a lot, whatever the case, whatever the situation. Um, he would make me cover up my ears in the back seat as him and his buddy rolled in the front laughing their ass off. Like, I'm going to cover up. They'd be like, cover up your ears. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm listening every yeah. fucking. And I was literally dumb enough to put my ears, my hands over my. But I was like, yeah, I'm not. I'm listening. Yeah. Bottom line is, I was like, 
what the fuck is this? <laughs> Tits and hookers and whores and fucking pussy cunt fucking... I'm fucking kindergartner. Yeah. This is how much of a love affair for comedy I had. I stole a bunch of his tapes by the time I moved in uh, fourth grade to J.J. Smith and Eatem Claw. I had tapes at that time that I would walk man on yeah. my way to J.J. And it was all, I had an Ice-T album. I had a freaking Andrew Dice Clay tapes, two different albums, Live at Madison Square and The Day They Laughter Died. A bunch of Michael Jackson tapes, shit that I just had. Mm -hmm. But I remembered, so then I moved for, fourth grade here, JJ, fifth grade, Pioneer Elementary, Auburn, Mr. Nielsen, fifth grade. It seemed like he would take a tape from me every other day. Uh -huh. And he would just be like, he wore a, a, he looked like a teacher from the Wonder Years and the old 60s right. teacher, like total drab, kind of like that f famous, you know, Mr. Arnold teacher, like yeah. more. Bottom line, he was just like a, po he would find, like what are you, are you listening are you listening to this and he just would like lose his shit like i might as well have been listening to like jihadi terrorist plans or something <laughs> like this guy was like did you know what they're saying and i'd be like yeah i think so <laughs> like you know fifth grader with right. that shit dude right. he was like losing his mind right and he's like every other day it's something else with you <laughs> i had a nice tea tape dude by the time he takes it off my headphones and puts it to his ear might not know a lot about Ice-T albums. That's some real shit. He has a song called Let's Get Butt Naked and Fuck. And that's what I was listening to when he put it to his ears. And it was, and it just simply, girl, let's get butt naked. It's like, and he just looked at me. I remember him just, go to the principal. Like, you know, like just super white man angry, like. What the hell is this? If it if it seems like you you may be hearing somebody in your trunk trying to get out, or maybe you you, uh, you just, I got my Yorkie in my jacket. I'm telling you, Adrian's like wrestling this microphone stand you, and table. You think this uh, <laughs> weed thing is this is the reality? So People, shaking. kids don't do weed. Um. Now, yeah, but that's 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 where it all came. From. I love stand up, bro, and I'm a freaking st student of it. Now I'm in LA. I used to go to the shit here in Seattle I'm all the time. You, yeah, you should. You, I, I, here's my here's my recommendation: <laughs> is you should go to an open mic. Go find some off the beaten. Don't go to the Laugh Factory open mic, but no. go to go to some off the beaten path, like comedy, like fake comedy club, and just go up there and talk. I think you'd you'd have a good, funny, three minutes of just talking about whatever. Like you could talk about your flight in here. Yeah. You could talk about your flight home. I'm sure you could talk to me right now. What happened? Was there a flight thing? What happened flying in here? <laughs> so it's you know I was just leading to tell you about that because my personality, dude. I mean, I think I'm a swell guy. I think I portray a swell guy. Yeah. And I am, for the most part, 95% of my day in life, every day. <laughs> but then when that 5% kicks in, I don't know where it comes from. Like, yeah. But it's genuine when yeah. it goes off. And then the beauty of it is, this is where I think I'm a, just an asshole, where I pat myself on the back <laughs> like a douchebag. Because <laughs> I think I'm good at what I do when I lose my shit. And people think, oh, here we go. Like, some guy's going to lose his shit. But it's like, dude... I'm pretty vicious with my words and I can chop somebody down so fast that they don't expect it. And I was grumpy. I got to the airport at five in the morning. So there is a jet. There is a, <laughs> you know what, dude, I swear to God, this is where I'm telling, I got another one for you before that when I was 19 and I wasn't allowed to take my interconnecting flight um, because of something I did to the airline, dude. But anyway, uh, Coming in, they they made me, you know, I got my, you see what I'm wearing? This yeah. Tight ass, big old jacket and my boots. And I had my paint guns that I brought to paint with in uh, my bags. And they, I knew it. I just knew it. And I was already pre-fired up, like putting my bags and my, my guns in my bag. I'm like, I know they're going to fucking fuck with me over this. And I was already kind of like mad. Was, Even, it, was it carry on? Carry on. And it's perfectly legal, but they always going to make a... 
sure, can we talk about this? It's like, yeah, jackass. So there's some fucking op- alien looking guns in my gun. Uh, bottom right. line is they're not, I've nothing on your list. So let's just move on, you know? Right. Like, so he, he, so anyways, I'm going through the freaking line and they, they, they asked me to not only go through the little stupid blower, put your hands up, but then they choose me to go off to the side. Now this happens to me often, right. but this time I was just like, I already have my opinions about the TSA. Right. You love them. And, uh, worthless career um and i just took that opportunity to like be like you know what i'm gonna lay into you motherfuckers and i do it cool calm and collectively so i'm like yeah sure thing dude let's go over here to where you're asking me to go and i was just like annoyed instantly and like my vicious i was happy like yeah here we go we're going so yeah and, and instantly i was just like and i was look i was listening to myself going Jesus Christ! Yeah, you're you just chill. a firecracker, just like chill talking to myself yeah. in my head, dude. As I'm like, you're worthless fucking job. I go, have you ever? Have you fucking ever caught a terrorist, motherfucker? Have you guys ever caught a motherfucker through this motherfucking line with anything in their shit? No, your job's pointless. And then I'm doing what they're asking me as I'm telling them all so this shit. Your hands shit. out there, hands you're, you're- out. You know, and then. They're pat- oh, we're going to put your buttocks. I'm thinking, yeah, sure. Now you're going to take it to the next level. Even though you're a cholo in your neighborhood, once you leave here, you're a gangbanger. You, right now, you're going to tell me you're going to check my buttocks. And, I, <laughs> and I'm like, put, you know, I'm going through the paces, like giving it to them. And they're just kind of left. And, they, and both these Mexican kids, Chicanos, were looking at each other like, this motherfucker, you know what I mean? Like, because they couldn't act up against, but I was cutting them down to the point where they're probably thinking, like, they would rather me be vulgar, stupid, and look like a fool with my or normal rhetoric they probably get all the time. But I, I cut them down. Yeah. I go, your job's worthless. I'm just doing my job, sir. If I had your job, I'd shoot my fucking son in the head, and then I'd fucking take myself and jump off a bridge. <laughs> like, because you're not going to amount to shit. I go, what are you what do you commute here three hours a day i was just laying into him dude like <laughs> and this guy's six foot four tatted up gangbanger typical tsa shaniqua oh, yeah, agent yeah, yeah. you know shaniqua comes up and says you know gives me a whole like listen here we can do this and i'm like yeah yeah we'll do your fucking thing i'm not saying for you guys not to i'm giving you a piece of my mind about it do you want to get my supervisor? Get the motherfucker. I'll give him a piece of... That's who the fuck I would rather fucking tell all this shit to. You do what the fuck... And that's how I got... That's literally how... And as soon as I go through there, I do what I always do. It's like... Like, I was upset, you know, I don't... I was, like, thinking the why... I guess what comes to my mind is I know the mature answer, which is what did that really get me? Right. But in a way, I mean... It's the whole fact that I took it, my opportunity, and I would have obliged any supervisor just to let them, that truly, that's just, I guess my real feelings just came out. I mean, the TSA is pointless. Let's just be real. They search 70-year-old ladies in fucking hand in wheelchairs. When the fuck has ever that been the motherfucking person you know, you're wasting time. You got us all standing here. It's five in the morning, man. Fuck. I'm going to fucking lay into these motherfuckers. Right. And I don't care. I so what happens? So, so, if so, I wasn't good at it, I wouldn't do it. But I think I'm good at it. And I'm better at the moment. If when I explain it, I sound like a psycho and I sound like your typical. But I think I cut people down to size pretty good. And it's enough to be <laughs> pretty, 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 pretty proud of pretty it. Pretty proud of it. Yeah. yeah. Here lies Adrian. Uh, he could cut down people like the best of them and damn it he was proud of it and damn it he didn't give a fuck because <laughs> you know at this day and age in the 2019s motherfuckers need to hear it because everything is a freaking tissue and a pat on the back and a little freaking ribbon instead of you know so maybe in another era i would be a different person but i just feel like i'm just are you uh, do you do you identify as a millennial no, I know I've seen some my year pop up on that list, and I only chuckle. I think, really, motherfucker, you're a boomer. Oh, is that what the other one would be? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm a boomer in my edit. I'm a grouchy yeah, you're old a friggin fucking seventy five, eighty year old. All my friends have always been older than me. You know, I mean, yeah. dude, it's crazy, and yeah. I, I do. I feel like young, dumb motherfucking. I, I would care about the way I sound, but I know that I know that. I know that whatever I say to whoever I'm saying it, 
they're hearing me. Yeah. I don't say, like, I don't just spout off. Like, I got. Have you ever <laughs> been in a customer service position where you've had to, like, hold your tongue because you know that you need this either job or the sale or this something where you've put inside, you've just raging? Well, you know, I always starts out that way when I, you know, I've, I'm sure, uh, yeah, I mean, fuck, maybe, definitely if it wasn't my business, I mean, I've, I've been in this, you know, catering to people with money, but, you know, personally, if it came down to like, no, I, I, I maintain respect, dude, I understand the customer and the business owner or the proprietor freaking type, um, relationship it's just to me it's about respect dude i i'm quick to lose it and drop down to someone's level and i'd like to think that i'm better at it i guess but that's it's immature i understand like i said i look back on it and i wish i had the poise of a witty mature person but i'm i think i'm just a witty out of control person (laughs) like and i'll punch you after you know we can we can really duke it out if you want after that's really last fist fight you got into a week ago Expl- with my neighbor talk about it he fucking parks a stupid trailer crossed all over the street doesn't leave any room for cars to pass and he thinks he can take a sweet ass time to load his car and i would give anyone a pass but normally when you do that and you back your trailer up to a residence you give at least half the street you know even if you use your hazards so i rolled by and i cussed him out said something or other and he asked me to you know cali shit we don't how, fuck how around how old is this dude fuck 28 oh, okay yeah he thought twice when i got out he was i said come on motherfucker and you know you throw the first blow white and i white no he was actually some other kind of a latin kid like some other latin race some other worthless fucking latin scumbag fucking race that he really got me mad and 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 you know what he i told him i said your mother's out here man have some fucking respect after he didn't want to throw a blow he's hopping around I, go, well, I ain't gonna chase you around dude i go you want to do this or not and he didn't he did the usual thing danced around yet you know, raised his voice which and i'm like i was i got out ready to face face to face and go to town saw his mother i told him look dude you better calm down before i have to come chasing you because you wouldn't settle down for me to punch his ass so i told him if we get into this kind of fight your mom's going to tumble into this mix because she was freaking out. Right. And this is my life. And then I just drove away telling him, yeah, we're not done, dude. You're going to catch me on a fucking other day and I'm going to fucking thrash you. This isn't done. I'm fucking hot. And I got my truck, drove home. By the time I got out of my truck, pulled it into my lot, and I see him right up on his little skateboard. He wanted some. So I'm, I didn't hesitate. I had already seen him out of the corner of my eye and I'm charging my gate while my partner's like, dude don't think about jail i'm like nobody rides up to my motherfucking house and fucking tells me and 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 plays tough guy did he it. know that you lived there yeah oh so oh, he, yeah he knew, we knew right each other oh yeah, yeah. and any, so wait wait any squabbles between before this no but i've always ran my mouth to him and f- drive by his house and tell him his car you should scrap these pieces of shit taking up room out here on the fucking street and that's that and so i think yeah, i wonder he, why this guy doesn't like you yeah you know <laughs> fuck him it's about respect again fucking <laughs> fucking junkyard out there the guy's like out, shit. the guy's out there just like enjoying his life you know it's just nice being a, just some dude roll up hey you got a piece of shit move that piece of shit yeah that's me dude and i do i, I mean t- trust me i'm a fucking coot dude i'm an old coot Anyway, I don't know what it is, but yeah, he, he came rolls down up on a skateboard. Yeah, I fucking charged him. I, I didn't give him a chance the last time he was trying to do the hop around and do the. Did you tackle, dude? You know what? I charged him fast and hard. My buddy was trying to stop me, and I was already th- blew through my gate before he. So I didn't want him. He was younger, dude, and I squabble often, but my I got strategies, so I just didn't want him to uh, use use the skateboard. Well, no, he was, you know. In LA, we squabble. We have a pride, dude. He was he was putting his skateboard down. I wasn't tripping. I wasn't gonna use it against him either because I thought I'm like I could pick that fucker up and just blast him with that. <laughs> and I like to get nasty like that and use weapons, uh, fight to fight. But anyways, um, he uh, 
I beat him. I charged him, put him on the ground, and like I always do, I just used my weight. And I was pounding on him when my buddy came and just broke us up. And he got up, got on a skateboard, and rode away. I said, that's right, you fucking renter. Go back to your fucking mother's house, you fucking renters. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Wait! <laughs> Wait. Like, like, you just get done... You just get done getting the squabble that obviously he rode up on. You were hot before, but you went total 75-year-old man on the way out. Just, you renters, go go boost your credit score. Go go put a down payment on something. Go save your... I, I, you That's went, not what a renter means in my neighborhood. What does it mean? <laughs> you Section 8 piece of shit, <laughs> welfare case, general relief collecting, food stamp selling motherfucker... Twelve oh. fucking junk car having ass motherfucker in the re- in the freaking you know in a house that you don't own fucking up my property value yeah I went fucking a wall hey. fuck these fuckers man you know it's not a derogatory ter- term um I, I I know I've caught myself yelling that and looking around the neighborhood and feeling like an asshole yeah right. but again um you know I um let's you're- make America great again <laughs> you're <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Fuck. You're, you're Clint Eastwood on that uh on that uh what, what movie what was that movie called? Uh, Tor- Gran Torino. Gran Torino. You are you're Clint Eastwood. In my case it's Grand Marquis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. You know, when you become a homeowner, dude, you realize and I'm not gonna lie to you, dude, I have caught myself in the you know, coming down, turning around dying out of a situation that i just got riled up in yelling at a neighbor yelling at a kid for right kicking my dogs at the fence all this has happened and then i walk away mad but in my head i'm chuckling going you did all this shit and 10 times worse yeah to, around enum claw you yeah. were you were a fucking nightmare like you were if you had yourself as a fucking neighbor you'd fucking shoot yourself right now <laughs> Dude, I punked my neighbor. I pulled my car in his driveway. Next door neighbor, right in my Enum Claw cul-de-sac, and laid out a big old. I just smoke showed his driveway out. I confronted. I mean, what did he do to piss you off? He call you. You know what? He was a wife beaten piece of shit, and his hot ass fucking dude. I had the neighbor in Enum Claw growing up. I had that neighbor. Every time I looked out my window, she was bending over, not bending at the knees. This is Friday. From, dude, this is yeah. if, and my dude ask Brent Bonatz, ask Corey Kanowski, ask Chris Brown. I would tell them each one by one, and they'd be like, "Shut the fuck up, you fucking yeah." She's hot. She was super hot. Little by little, they all saw it on their own, and they all became believers, dude. And then it became a thing like everybody knew Beaver's neighbor. If you're out there, we and trust me. In my, sh- I used to sit on my front lawn in lawn chairs and do some powwow circles, smoking pot all day, fucking just watching middle, the neighbor. Middle of the day, no, she would walk by like, "Hey, boys!" Like young high school kids, and knowing that she's, she's little, got you it. know, she's, she's got, got it. it. She's fucking hot. She was, dude. She looked. I always wonder where she went. She's probably like, let's see, we're thirty eight. She's probably like. I bet you, 50. I bet my left nut that that chick is uh, a looker. <laughs> to this day, somewhere, somewhere, making another neighborhood happy. One one uh, stre- at one time. pair of leggings at a time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, she was rocking those leggings before I even remember being the term for those back then. But A little bit yoga pants type Dude, things. I'm not kidding. She was funny because um she had kids and she was very just like it got to the point where i kid you not i regret not coming out one day and just saying jen you know what you're doing right just just fucking tell me you know what you're fucking doing yeah and i'll be happy that's i just want because you know you have to wonder it's yeah. like lady lady you're killing me <laughs> Like, it was, you know, you're 18, 16, and set, whatever the fuck, but I'm not kidding you. And the funny thing is this, is like the joke that it's like, no, no, she never bends at the knees. Never. <laughs> Just always has to put it out there like that. And it's like, okay. 
Jeez Louise, she I, was a hottie. But yeah, her husband was your typical muscle head. He was, I think he was abusive, bro. Like she literally came over a few times. Like I didn't know what to do. Like I think she was, for what it's worth, yeah, me. She told us a few times, like, if you guys see him, and, like, I got bad. The police would show up 6, 7, and a.m. Like, it ended up getting a restraining order. He ended up getting, and, you know, when I would be like, all right, dude, I'm not, I never got involved in his business. He'd come over yelling at the top of his lungs at 7 in the morning. But hey, I would hey, just you walk. you guys too? No, but I oh. would walk out and be like, you know, obviously it's a situation between right. A and B, and here's smart-ass Adrian popping out. Hey, man, can you keep it the fuck down? We're in the garage smoking out, and all I hear is this bullshit. Like, maybe it wasn't the 7 o'clock, but he, all hours of the day right. shit when they would be fighting. And it was more like to interrupt and try to be De-escalate. brave. If I was really brave, I'd have been like, hey, motherfucker. Yeah. But no, you know, the sm- only smart-ass little ways you can. But at the same time, dude, I seen his child hiding from him. That motherfucker used to come in the cul-de-sac. And his daughter would be coming home from school, and on 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 whims, a couple times, I'd look out my window, and there's little Jordan, his daughter, and she's like crouched down behind my car or playing commando, crawling across the lawn. And I'd run to my other window just to see, like, who the fuck is she hiding from? And there's your dad, like, driving by with his head out the window, like, mean mugging, like, stalking the girl. Like, so that's the kind of guy he was. And uh, he had friends on the police force. Oh. Until it got bad, they literally, I'd be like, what, your fucking butt buddy can get away with this shit? They'd be out there. They'd be letting him go. I knew for a fact that she had told me. Like, she was very revealing to me, too. Like, Well, it kind of sounds like it. Well, <laughs> other, emotionally. Like, no, she would. She would come over and be like, I'm sorry, he's such a dick. And she would awkwardly, like, spill some. And they would, you know, I'd be like, what do I do, lady? And she'd realize that. Oh, I've said too much. And like, right. I'm sorry. I'm just. So it was like, fuck me, you know, fucking white people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's. No. Uh, it well, was just funny because he definitely thought that of like fucking Mexicans. And it's like, yeah, fuck you and your fucking jarhead imperfect life. You sell cars, <laughs> jar- you fucking loser. Sure. <laughs> you sell fucking cars. I mean, no offense, Bobby, but I'm just saying. Back then, yeah, I, there used, you go. I used to use that against. I used to tell him back when I was always a dick like that. And that's what he did for a living. And he used to. Sh- Back when we first started, like, somewhat talking, he would try to impress me as the older, cool neighbor guy yeah. with the Mazda 3 protege wagon or something that he was driving from Fugit as the... And I would... I'd be like, dude, that's the wackest piece of shit. I'm into fucking... No, I had a 6'4 in the driveway, and this guy's... <laughs> so it, he, when he got to... Like, when I told him that, it was, like, shutting him down. He was like, I can't believe this kid like kid do it. He had a he had a, he had an attitude towards me. He didn't like us. He's a prick. And he fucked with my mom and my brother. My brother called me a couple times and he had a, I felt like he thought he was tough enough to like he'd come over to the my brother have his whole house packed full of his little runt friends and he would come over pounding on the front door, dude, like and the, my brother would put him on the phone like be on the phone with me and I can hear the neighbor open this door right now and if i ha- twice i happened to be in town and i flew over there on my in my prelude and i did i like ripped into the cul-de-sac and went straight into his driveway pulled the e-brake and just lit up my tires smoke show hopped out and those times i was ready to fucking beat his ass or get into an altercation with him but i think obviously looking back on it he was a big old old you know 40 year old like me right now you got some little fucking you know, he probably could have fucked, but he obviously would have gotten in trouble or whatever. Yeah. I wasn't even, I was 17, maybe 18. But those are the Eden Claw adventures. Those are the Eden Claw adventures as told by Adrian Cardenas. Every, like, once a year, he'll come out here. We'll do our Adrian episode. That's right. We got two of them now. I'm excited about that. Um, we're going to go ahead and call it because Adrian needs to smoke some weed because he's already. Like fighting the, the and even the though microbes. weed is legal in Washington, it's not legal at Travis Kinney's house. It's never legal at Travis <laughs> Kinney's house. Hey, fuck that! Hollenbeck got to drink beer and sit here. That's I don't. Yeah, that's you're right. It's you can't smell beer. I can smell that shit. <laughs> uh, did you did you listen? especially the pumpkin spice flavor? Did you listen to some of the podcasts? You know, I, I, no, not with Hollenbeck. I started and then I got interrupted and I never seemed to, when I listened to the podcast, I, 
try to find a just all by myself yeah. so I can listen and it hasn't happened. So yeah, I started it. You listen to Corinne's yet? No, no. I listened to Zach's and that's the ones that I've been trying to blow through. The Zach yeah. was the last one I listened to. Man on Man. Have you, you haven't heard that one yet, have you? No, you haven't. No. It's okay. Or... I won't ruin it for you. But get on those things and uh, and then it, it, I... Corinne will throw your name out every once in a while <laughs> in premenopause. So you, you every... might you, you might hear you not, not once an episode, but like every once in a while she'll be like, oh yeah, because like Adrian, like that guy, you know, like. That's fun. Yeah. So you got to. You're... Shout out to Birdie. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, everyone. Well, good oh, go night. Ahead. Yeah, everyone. Thanks for thanks for listening, Adrian. Thanks for showing up. No and, sweat. And uh, have a nice uh, flight down. Hopefully, the, the TSA doesn't give you such a hard time. Oh no, you're driving. Driving back down. It's funner that way. It's. I look forward to it, man. I got a couple stops at some junkyard friends' houses and check out some stuff. Nice. Well, I hope you find something awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care.